Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Breaking the Mold. I'm your host, Mike Bellardi, here with Justin Pierre of the one and only Motion City Challenge Track. Yay! That's me. That's you. That's me. Justin, how are you doing, man? I'm hanging in there, as the man says. Hanging, hanging in, in there. there, yeah. Yeah, you, you seem pretty comfortable. It's the comfy chair. Yeah. I once saw an episode of, um, I forget the exact name of the show, Rocco. The, Rocco's the, Modern Life? Rocco's Modern Life, where, where he was catapulted, um, he was catapulted over like uh, like nails and then like cactuses and all these things. He's like, ah, and he, you know, it's like he's gonna land in all this bad stuff, and then eventually he ended up landing in this whole like acreage of comfy chairs. Was that like an analogy as to what you have going on right now? Mm-hmm. Kind of just catapulted, and you just oh, landed just, in some I comfy catapulted chair. right in here. Kind of jealous. Yeah. I'll be honest with Sorry you. Sorry about the hole. Usually, usually that's my that's my little chair. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. Did I steal your sh stuff? No, it's all right. But I want you to be comfortable. If you didn't notice, there's a lever there. A lever? A lever? That's how we s uh, say I it in Minnesota. Uh. I'm from Pennsylvania. Didn't. Uh, oh yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Is it how supposed to vibrate like that? Uh, so is that me? A little added feature I added in there. <laughs> If you didn't know, actually, uh, I forget what state it was. A guy was um, arrested for drunken driving and a lazy boy. How does that work? He um, he put a 25 horsepower lawnmower engine in it. Really? Yeah. Huh. And the police confiscated it. That's it's on crazy. Facebook if you're looking for it. I once knew a one-legged man who got arrested for drunk driving a lawnmower. It's a true story. True story. Yeah. I met him at in the drunk tank... Uh, it's a long, it happened a long time ago, but <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, maybe that was too much information. Should we get to just do like the should we, in the uh, we can we can try. Yeah, okay. All right. It's good that we can read each other's minds because I didn't say anything right there. This, this connection. Yeah, I We're just separated stuttered. a little bit, but we have a connect. Yeah, it's more of a mental. We thing. got it going on. Mm -hmm. So um, you're in Scranton, Pennsylvania. True story. You're a big Office fan. I am. I I'm a bit behind. I think um. Um, I saw there was like an episode where um, I think I think Jim put Dwight's staple in some Jello. It was really funny. <laughs> so I'm a little behind though, but uh, right, a little bit. A bit. I think there's I'm there's, there's, there's a too. season or two. Right? Yeah, you know what's real weird? Um, a lot of the people from Scranton don't actually get into it the show as mm -hmm. much as people from outside. So uh, every time you know someone comes up, oh you're from Scranton, you watch The Office, and I'm kind of just like, uh, no. Not really. Yeah? No. Do you, I wonder if it's the same. We had a sort of a phenomenon in Minnesota back in the mid-90s uh, about the movie Fargo because that was okay. it's all supposed to be about Minnesota and people do talk like that, but that's a sort of heightened uh, version of it. Very exaggerated. Yeah, so it's like everyone is just like, oh, you're from Minnesota. Oh, Fargo, hey, how you doing? You know, like, wait, that was really bad. Yeah, you know, like, once a movie comes you know, to your town, it's just ruined. Yeah. It's ruined for you who actually lived there. I feel you. I understand. I know what you're saying. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> don't you, don't you just you're you're not doing your job! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot that there was the camera stuff. Uh, it's, it's all right. It's your we eyes have are, that connection. Your eyes are just magical. Oh, thanks. <sighs> Quite dreaming okay. yourself. Yeah, thanks. So you've been on a small tour, going around for a little while, and... We want to know how has the reaction been that you've been, you know, on your own. It's been really good. I think um, I've been using the Twitter machine uh, in order to get people to come out, which I kind of like the whole last-minute planning. Um, but I, I'd, I'd have to say that th 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 this is the second day out after I had a week off from being sick. Um, so we had all this wonderful momentum going, and then I sort of destroyed that. So I apologize. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so this is great. And yesterday we had the most people come out to anything um, up until that point at both stops. I played in front of a dinosaur um, at the Carnegie Museum of Natural History, and then later on I played at a school at a university. And there's just like so many kids there; it was ridiculous. And this is a lot of people too, so it's 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 a good sign. And hopefully by saying that it doesn't just like come crashing down because that's <laughs> what happens sometimes. It's like, oh yeah, I've never had a ticket, or oh yeah, I've never done this. And then, bam. We're both going to end up getting pulled over later. Yeah. And oh. I don't drive. So that's <laughs> going to be interesting. That's going to be really yeah. interesting. But you like the whole spontaneous outcome that you have by mm. using this Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. I don't like the terminology of Twitter or tweeting or tweety. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> silly, but it totally works. Very awesome. Now, 
with the whole entire band, you guys have a new album coming out on mm -hmm. January 19th. Um, it's entitled My Dinosaur's Life. My Dinosaur Life. My Dinosaur Life. Yeah. Get um, it right. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. You're going to beat me up after the show. No, I don't beat people. That's what he does. Ah, yeah. Ah, He's a big scary man, yeah, with the beard. <laughs> now, you notice him doing this? I, yeah. A little bit. I'm just... Yeah. I'm just I'm, I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's okay. You can, you can relax. It's All right. Fine. I'm getting nervous. <sighs> towel, guys. Can I have a towel? Towel. towel. You right. can use my sleeve. Maybe later. Okay. <laughs> now, is this album going to sound like the classic Motion City soundtrack, or are you guys going for something new? Have you changed the sound at all? Not on purpose if we have and I found that as a fan of music you know m like you have your idea of what the band is more so than the band itself I think by being in the band you can't really tell as much as you know because you're in it and you're doing it so like uh, for me yeah like like for me being a fan of like a band like the Flaming Lips it's like I noticed the change and for the Flaming Lips it totally works for other bands you know it who've like changed and I'm like oh, I was into their early stuff you know because that's when I got into them whereas um, you get into like a band like I got into the band the Pixies when their last album came out that was when I first heard them and I worked my way backwards and so I liked everything so I find that when you start listening to a band from the beginning it's very rare that you know you go along for the ride there's like a few bands that I think get better mm -hmm. as they age um, one being Jawbox um, you know, Flaming Lips. Um, so I don't, I don't know if I'm answering your question. <laughs> uh, on purposefully, I don't think we've tried to do anything. We just, on this record specifically, we just, we just tried to, we just wrote what we liked. And I think on the last record, we had all these pressures, maybe imagined or real, I don't know. And, um, and we definitely were trying to do something. Whereas on this record, we didn't try. And I didn't warm up once when we were singing. And so there's a lot of, not screaming, but you know, rough, Very bad. Rough. There's like a lot of bad things, like bad, but we liked the mistakes, so we left them in there. And, and so it just feels more raw and more, it's definitely more energetic than the last record. And um, do you have um, any expectations from this album? Um, nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, well, I don't, it's kind of awesome because uh, we, we had a lot of these, like, you know, um, AP was, like, the last record was, like, one of the most anticipated records for AP through their survey. And, um, and so, you know, when it came out, it just wasn't, people weren't as into it as they wanted to be or something. And so what I found is that there's no expectations for this record, at least as far as I'm aware of, you know. So, so I think that's good because hopefully people will be surprised <laughs> in a good way. Any good way? But yeah, I don't know. I love it. I think it's. I, th I think it rocks more. Just yeah. to you know, to be simple, simplify it. Now yeah. I'm nervous because I'm like um, talking and I'm not very good at. My sleeve? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 but um, now you guys also took a little bit longer of a time to create this album as opposed to your last album. Mm -hmm. When I was that beneficial did you guys more or less just take some time to lay out and leisure a little bit and kind of relax? No, we. Uh, our drummer broke his arm on New Year's mm -hmm. a year ago. And that set us back. I think originally we were looking at hopefully like a May, you know, summer release. And, and we just kind of were trying to figure out how we were going to do things. And in that process, what was cool is we uh, sent, um, we started sending ideas to each other, like, because we all live in different states. And so Matt is in Virginia, uh, Josh and I are in Minnesota, Jesse's in New York, and Tony's in LA. And so Matt would write something and record it, you know, in uh, Pro Tools or GarageBand or Reason or whatever. And then he would send the files to Josh. Josh would add guitars to it, send it to me. I would do vocals. Send it, you know, we just kind of like send it to each other. And we wrote a bunch of songs that way. And that was the first time that we'd ever done that. And then we would um, give the tracks to Tony to listen to and usually delete the drums so that he could come up with his own, you know, idea. And then the songs would change again. So what we found was... Um, it took a while, but then finally he got better. And so when we actually went in to record, we did everything but the drums. We had really crappy drums to play to. So it was just like we had this kind of half really cool sounding thing and there's just horrible drums and it was just <laughs> awful. So not until like the last week of recording was when Tony laid down the drums, which is weird because usually you do, you the, do drums the drums first. first yeah. yeah, but then we did that and like, and then if he had a cool accent, we wanted to change something, then we would go in and change the guitars too. So it was this weird thing. And I think it allowed us to rethink how we write music. And um, so that, that was, backwards. yeah, yeah. And, and it was due to the fact that he broke his arm. So, so it was like a bad thing that happened that something good out of it, you yeah. know, came. You guys was beat weird. the odds. Yeah, we did. We beat the shit out of him. <laughs>